Hey, good morning. Uh, today is Monday, June 6, 2011, and we're here for an oral history interview with Nancy Murphy. My name is Christine Widmeyer, and Bob Vey is behind the camera. We'll be conducting the interview on behalf of the George Mason Oral History Program. Our interview is taking place at Fenwick Library. So to begin, uh, when and why did you come to George Mason University? Well, first, just let me comment that I'm very happy to be a part of this project. We are all about our stories, and after working here for 24 years, I have a few stories to tell, and I'm glad to have this opportunity to, to tell you. We're so glad to have you. Uh, when and why did I come to George Mason? Originally, after being married to a military man for years and years, never working full-time, we moved right across the street. And uh, I was 41, had never worked full-time before. I used to traverse Patriot Circle in 1987, uh, early mornings, and thought, this looks like a great place to work, and it's right across the street. I'm going to just check it out. That was the beginning of a 24-year romance. <laughs> OK, uh, so what positions have you held during your time at George my original position was in career services, a very short time for eight or nine months. In 1988, Ernie Berger was the vice president for the foundation. I worked as his assistant, and what a fun job was that. I used to go around building to building and measure the size of the room and meet with jewelers to decide if a donor gave X amount of money, and this money went to X amount of space, what would be an appropriate thank you gift? Unfortunately, the economy went bellied up, bellied up in 1989. Ernie was fired. He eventually became the Board of Supervisors for Fairfax County. He was the director. The position Sharon Bulova holds today. And, um, and I moved to the job that I've enjoyed so much over the last 22 years, 22 and a half, and that is I've been the admin assistant for the chief student affairs officer in university life, also known as student affairs. Okay. Um, did you participate in any major committees? Uh, if so, what were the results? Uh, one of the first ones I participated on you know, with was the mentoring program. And uh, we would meet once a week with our mentors. And Leslie Malone is now 40-something. She was my first mentor. And uh, Christine Cheese Medea is 39. And I was one of her mentors, so uh, I've been able to keep track with each of my mentees. And that program, even today, has added and enriched my life so much. I also uh, formed the George Mason University Book Club. I held that position for 15 years on campus. We read all nonfiction. We read books that uh, were very difficult to understand. Uh, it was a stretch for all of us. We met once a month and uh, did that for 15 years and enjoyed that very much. I served on the board as the liaison admin person since 1988. Uh, the board of visitors comprised of 16 individuals appointed by the governor had lots of interesting personalities. And rather than continue in that vein, I'll say it was one of the most interesting challenges and continues to be of my job. Oh, the other thing that I did, I just wanted to mention this too, I started the first women's golf group on campus. I held that position uh, for 15 years. That was an after work activity. We golfed at Penderbrook. Women only, that's what we were called. And uh, to this day, I look fondly back at that, at that fun. Great. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the history of university life? When did it come to be? What purpose was university life expected to fulfill? And why was there a need for it to come about? 
Student affairs is always an important component of a, any university community. Originally, the department was headed up by an associate dean. When Dr. Merton came 13, 14 years ago, he wanted more than an associate dean to be in charge of student affairs. So at that time, he said, I would like the vice president of student affairs to report directly to me as a member of the executive council. For your information, the members of the executive council right now are uh, the vice president of information technology, the vice president for university life, the vice president for university relations, the vice president of the foundation, the provost, the chief of staff, the senior vice president and Dr. Merton. So these eight individuals comprise the, and today comprise the executive council. Student affairs was not represented until Dr. Merton arrived. Dr. Merton insisted that a vice president be appointed and more than that, he said it had to be from the faculty and more than that, as a sidelight, he believed it should be a woman because, woman because at that time there were four men only on the executive committee. Interviews were held and Dr. Karen Rosenblum was appointed the first vice president and then it was student affairs and then Dr. Merton leaned back and said no no this is more than student affairs this is university life of the staff faculty and students. So Karen Rosenblum was assigned the onerous task of creating and to, of attempting to develop a sense of community among students, staff, and faculty. So that's the history until seven years ago. Karen said, I've enjoyed this very much. It's been a nice ride, but I'm I'm ready to step down. So we had a national search and Dr. Sandy Sharons uh, is now the Vice President of University Life and has been for the last eight years. Um, so what specifically does student affairs do on campus? What role does the Chief Student Affairs Officer play and how has that role changed over the years? I look at the first, speaking first of how has that changed. I'm thinking of our first staff meetings in university life under the vice associate dean, uh, Dean Ken Bumgardner. We would sit in a conference room about the size of this room. At the most, on a given Wednesday, there were 10 of us. Just recently, university life staff met in rooms five, six, and seven in Student Union Building 2, there were 115 chairs that were uh, set up and we still had standing room only. So you can see the role of student affairs has extended greatly. There, there's a lot of literature and data out there that says that a student who is actively engaged on a college campus succeeds more, has a, a more successful student life experience, which helps retain our student. So the role of university life at, at the very outset is to help a student become engaged in non-academic activities. And so uh, Student Affairs organizes um, the those activities outside of their academic career? Uh, Sandy has a staff of about 215 right now. It ranges from the Counseling Center to Housing and Residence Life to Early Identification to English Language Institute. She also oversees the Dean of Students Office, the Student Health Office, um, just about every non-academic side of the campus. It's the most fun area of George Mason as far as I'm concerned. 